Hello booktube, Lynette here and today's video is going to be all the books that I managed to read in the month of June. First things first, I want to apologise um, if the lighting's a little bit bad. I, although it's the middle of the day here, my flat is currently reading 27 degrees. Um, I've shut the windows while I'm filming because someone's doing some building work out behind so that is coming through on the uh, microphone. Um, I did a little test so I've had to shut the window while I do that so I'm a little bit of a hot sweaty mess um, and I'm having to keep the curtains closed to keep some of the sun out um, and I didn't want to delay filming any longer so yes so my hair is fluffy because it's too hot to do anything with it other than allow it to dry naturally so it goes a bit curly um, so yeah so that's why I look a bit of a hot sweaty mess and why it's a bit dark in here um, but yes so this is my June wrap up I had a very good reading month in June I picked up 12 books um, and I finished 11 so I had a really great reading month I also took part in whatever a thon which is the readathon hosted by Maddie over at book browsing blog I'll try and link her channel down below for you um, it's a month-long readathon that she's done the last two years she's not decided if she's doing it for a third year yet um, it's a lot of work behind the scenes for her so I do get why uh, she might not run it again because she has quite a full-on full-time job as well um, by all accounts so it's not something she can always find time to do and she she needs um, people to help out behind the scenes as well I think so yeah it's it's a really great really fun reading month um, because there was just no pressure I had a TBR I managed to stick to it um, because of whatever I thought um, and I did really really well and I'm really pleased with myself I'm going to talk about the books in the order that I finished them, um, not necessarily whether they counted towards particular things, because every book that I finished, apart from the first one in the month, counted for whatever a thon. Some of the books were to fulfil specific prompts for whatever a thon, but I'm not really going to go into that for you. I think I went into it all when I did my TBR, so I will link that up above for you as well. So just a few stats to go into um, for the month. So like I said, I managed to finish 11 books. That was 2,955 pages. And because I listened to two audiobooks, that equaled to more than 31 hours of audio. I read six physical books. I read three ebooks and I listened to two audiobooks. And they covered a range of genres, so there was fantasy, there's romance, there's middle grade fantasy, there's contemporary, there's historical fiction. Um, yeah, it just covered a whole range this month, so I'm really, really pleased with my reading. So without further ado, because I've been wittering on for a little while now, let's look at the books that I managed to finish. So the first one that I finished was a series continuation, and that is Echoes of Fire by Suzanne Wright. This is book four in her Mercury Pack series, uh, Shifter series, which is a series that I started quite a few years ago now, but never continued with um, because I cancelled my uh, subscription to Kindle Unlimited and they were good, but I didn't want to buy them good. Kind of, I was glad that I pay a subscription for them rather than actually owning them outright. Uh, this book is about Bracken and Madison. One is a wolf shifter, one is a palace cat shifter. And they've both been kind of suppressing their emotions. So they don't recognise that they are each other's true mates until they get right up into each other's faces and something happens um, between them that scares the both of them. So this brings them together and then it's all about them learning to trust each other and that they're going to be a part of each other's world and they're not going to let each other down. And I had a really good time reading it. Um, they aren't, they're not the best romance stories I've read out there. They are ones that just kind of I enjoy but then just put down and, you know, I don't really think about. Um, I've thought about the series in terms of I need to finish it. Uh, but I haven't really thought about the characters. The characters don't keep coming back to me. Um, that one didn't count for whatever a thon because I was already uh, more than, I think I was just over halfway through it when June started. Uh, so although it is a June finish, it isn't a whatever a thon finish. But 
every book that I'm going to talk about from here on in counted for whatever a thon. The first book that I then finished after that is Circe by Madeline Miller. Uh, sorry about the shininess. Again, it's the light. It doesn't help with the lighting. Um, Circe is a Greek myth retelling about uh, Circe, who is the daughter of the Titan sun god Helios. Uh, she discovers that she has powers and she is, in fact, a witch. Um, and she confesses to a crime for which she is then banished to an island um, in exile and she is alone there and it's about what happens after that various characters from Greek history come into this so we meet Daedalus uh, we meet Odysseus and um, yeah it's it's really what happens a lot of what happens then is the fallout from her meeting with Odysseus and then subsequently what happens after that and how she puts some things right and repents for some of the sins of the past and I've really thoroughly enjoyed it. I love Madeline Miller's writing. I adored um, The Song of Achilles when I read it last year. So reading Circe was a no-brainer for me. And I have, in fact, picked up the short story recently that she's pu uh, published. Um, so I'm looking forward to picking that one up as well. And I look forward to more by this author because she really does suck me in and teach me um, things that I didn't know about Greek myth. The first of the audiobooks that I listened to is The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien. Um, this was to fulfill prompts on the bingo board and this is my favourite middle grade book of all time um, and it was the first book that properly introduced me to fantasy. I think we all know what it's about, it's about Bilbo Baggins who is uh, hired as a burglar uh, by a bunch of dwarves who need to take back their home, their mountain home from Smaug the Dragon. And it's about the adventures they go on to get to the mountain. It's about what happens when they arrive at the mountain. And I just absolutely thoroughly adore this story. I really enjoyed listening to it on audio. I don't have the Andy Serkis version. Um, Andy Serkis, for those who don't know, played uh, Gollum in The Hobbit and the Lord of the Rings films. Now, for me, his voice, even though he put on a voice when he was playing... Um, Gollum, for me, he will forever be associated with Gollum and I cannot bring myself to listen to his versions. So I have listened to a different version, a different narrator, who again, I thoroughly enjoyed, kept me listening, couldn't wait to get in my car to go to work um, so that I could pick it up every day. Um, so yes, definite, always going to be a five star read for me because it just stays at the top of my favourites tree. And the next book that I finished in um, paperback format is Ebonite by Ross McKenzie. This is about a young girl, uh, Lara Bell Fox, who she is basically a scavenger in the sewers of the city where she lives, um, finding old discarded items and then trading them in for money uh, so that she can earn a living. However, she finds something in the sewers one day which changes everything. There is an evil who is trying to take over the land um, and she ends up fighting directly against that evil because we discover that actually Lara Bell is a witch um, and everything that she believed was true is turned on its head and it's where we go from there. This was a really good middle grade fantasy. I really enjoyed it. I'm still not certain if it's going to be a series or not. Um, I think there might have been a sequel. I'm not sure. I'll do a little bit of research uh, before I edit and I'll put it down here for definite if it is um, if it is a, a series or not. Because if there is more, I would like to read more. Um, it's not one that I would kind of consume like I have done uh, some books in the past. Uh, but yes, really thoroughly enjoyed it. It's a great entry to fantasy for 9 to 12 year olds. Um, and I look forward to exploring more of Ross McKenzie's work in the future. And the next book that I finished was a contender um, and was at one point the favourite of the month. So spoiler, it's no longer the favourite of the month because I've read something since I did my um, mid-year freakout tag, which went up a couple of weeks ago. Um, but yes, this was definitely, is definitely one of my favourites of this year. It, 
and also it became a contender for our July book club pick but it lost out to Sea Witch by Sarah Henning instead um, but that book is The Dreamweavers by Barbara Erskine this is um, dual timeline historical fiction the historical fiction part of it takes place during the reign of King Offa um, and so in the 800s uh, 8th century um, so starts around about 775 AD uh, for the historical section we also have a modern timeline and we have um, a young woman called B who can see ghosts and she spends her time helping them to cross from this world to the next and resolving their issues so that they can do that she is called to uh, a small holding in the Welsh mountains um, just on the border between Wales and England and there is where she meets uh, the ghost of King Offa's daughter Edba. Um, so we then follow Edba's storyline through Bee's visions and we follow Bee's storyline as she's trying to not get overly involved with what's happening. Um, I absolutely really love this book. I binged on Barbara Erskine about 10 to 15 years ago now and I burnt myself out on her books and I haven't been able to bring myself to pick any up since. I think I may have reread Lady of Hay which was the first book that I ever read by her um, but this was the first one that made me really go yes I need to pick up one of her books. I'm really in the mood for this and I'm glad I did because, like I said just before I started talking about it, it is Contender. It is one of the best books I've read so far this year. There are some flaws with it. There is one particular character in here and her storyline that I think was thrown in just to throw some tension um, at the story. And I don't think it was needed. I think it actually took away because the way that part of the storyline was wrapped up it was just wrapped up so quickly and with no real thought I think she just didn't know what to do with it um so I just don't think it needed to be in there at all but yes thoroughly enjoyed this book um and it did leave me wanting to read more by her and because I I just love this premise that you have these all the books I've read by her follow the same format it's dual timeline with a hugely historical um timeline and someone in the modern day who for whatever reason is experiencing or being drawn to that timeline um and I just I just love that absolutely love it um so yes definitely look out for more Barbara Erskine in my wrap-ups in future because I just I need to get back into her writing again because it is just I, it just sucks me in and I just couldn't put it down and I just don't want to stop talking about it because it's just I just enjoyed it that much um but yes I'm going to put it down now and I'm going to talk about the rest of the books that I read this month and then the next book I went back to my middle grade shelves my 9 to 12 year old shelves and this book is Dragon City by Katie and Kevin Sang uh this is about um dragons it's uh middle grade fantasy and it's about four young children who go on a retreat um, of sorts or a summer camp to China and they get sucked into a mountain where they get paired up with dragons. This is the third book in the series so I can't really talk about it very much um, but they are dealing with the fallout of what happened in the previous two books and it's kind of the end of that. There are five books in the series. Um, now from what I understand the next book doesn't immediately follow these four but it does I'm not really sure um but yes this is the Dragon Realm series for anyone who doesn't know it's really again really good introduction to fantasy um it is for the younger age of the 9 to 12 year old age range but they are good fun they are a quick read and I do really enjoy them I have the next book on my shelves and I will definitely pick up book five when it comes out so yes um definitely recommend these if you like middle grade um if you like dragons uh, if you like fantasy and if you just want something that you can quickly read without having to get too absorbed in in too deep a manner and then my next read is one that I was feeling a little bit intimidated by but I've joined some live shows recently watched some live shows and um, joined in the chat 
and I have been encouraged to keep going with them because they are good books apparently and I did thoroughly enjoy this one the first one previous one to this one but that book is Starfell Willow Moss and the Forgotten Tale this is book two in the Starfell series it's by Dominique Valente again middle grade fantasy 9 to 12 year old fantasy it's about Willow Moss who is a young witch um, in the first book when we meet her she ha her power is that she can find lost things and her family don't really think it's that useful a power however it becomes a lot more useful throughout that first book and then in the second book that develops uh, it's a completely new story so the um the, the adventure they go on in the first book is completely wrapped up in the first book um, and then we have a new adventure in this one but obviously it develops uh, Willow's character a bit more and her power um, and it does deal with the fallout from the first book as well so I did really enjoy it. Um, it wasn't for me, it wasn't as brilliant as it was maybe spoken about uh, by the people who encouraged me to keep going with it. But I do have book three, which is Willow Moss and the Vanished Kingdom. And I can't remember what the fourth book's called, but I have the paperback on pre-order um, for later on in the year when it comes out. So I'm looking forward. I am looking forward to moving on with these again. They're a fantastic introduction. I'd say this is, it's not the younger end of 9 to 12, but it's also not the upper end either. It's kind of somewhere in the middle. So it's for those who are transitioning from maybe beginners to um, experienced. But yes, they are great fun. Really enjoyed them um, and looking forward to picking them up in the future. The next book is one that I picked up because of the hype and it's recently had a lot a lot of hype because it's been adapted for by Netflix and that book is Heartstopper Volume 1 by Alice Oseman. I picked this up purely, purely because of the hype and because a couple of people that I have been watching on live shows just cannot stop raving about it and after reading it I can understand why. Uh, a couple of weekends ago, I wasn't doing very well mentally. I was just having a day of mental blocks um, and it was a Sunday and I was trying to get things done and I was halfway through changing my bedding actually. And this was on the side beside my bed and I picked it up and I devoured it. I think it took me about an hour to get through it. It's a graphic novel. Um, it's LGBTQ+. Uh, it's about Nick and Charlie. Um, Charlie is uh, gay. He is out as gay. Um, but Nick doesn't realise that he is. He just knows that he feels more as he gets to know Charlie. So it's about them meeting each other and actually getting to know each other. And then becoming friends. And then from there, obviously, Charlie knows that he's attracted to Nick. Um, but Nick doesn't really understand what's going on with himself. He just knows that Charlie is his friend and that maybe he's thinking more of it than that. Absolutely, thoroughly enjoyed it. I have already picked up volume two um, and will definitely be picking that up very, very quickly because I want to continue the series and I'm really enjoying it. Once I finish volume two, then I'm going to watch the TV series because I believe that the Netflix series covers the first two volumes but yeah I mean this is this I mean romance isn't off the beaten track for me I love romance but I have tried um LGBTQ romances in the past and I think I've just read the wrong ones because I haven't enjoyed them in a lot of ways um or the the romance part of it I haven't enjoyed but this watching Nick and Charlie's friendship grow and turn into more especially for Nick I just, I, I, I just really, I devoured it. I loved it. Um, and yes, I think I definitely need to pay attention more to the romance novels that, um, especially the people that have been hyping this, the romance novels that they love because I think I need to start picking them up um, so that I can widen my reading because I do need to do that. And this is the beginning. And the next book that I finished was the second of the three um, ebooks that I read this month. And that book is Mr. Penumbra's 24 hour bookstore. And this is my favorite book of the month. It, I, 
I was just left, I, I went to work, um, I started it in the evening and the following morning when I was get, getting up to get ready for work, I did not want to leave the house. I wanted to stay home and read this book. And it's been a long time since the book has actually taken me down that path. Um, it's been a long time since I've wanted to stay up reading a book all night just so I could get it finished. And this book did that for me. It's about a young man who is looking for work and he finds a job in Mr Penumbra's 24 hour bookstore and he does the 10pm to the 6am shift. He has to keep a written log of all the customers who come in, what they buy, what they borrow. Um, and there's a mystery surrounding because the majority of the books are not books that anyone would ever heard of. They aren't in any library. He cannot find anything about them anywhere and he's given the instruction that he is not to open those books but he becomes intrigued he becomes intrigued by the people who are coming in and, and picking up those books and taking them away again and then bringing them back and taking something else out and he's intrigued about what's going on and then this book is the snowball effect of what he does when he then starts to employ modern technology uh, to work out the mystery of what is going on where actually modern technology and these books is forbidden and I absolutely loved it. It does have some quite sad moments in it, I'm not going to lie because there are, it, to put it, put it into context that I think maybe I could get people to understand, it's when a really, a film, a new release film or a new release book is really really hyped up, it's going to be really really excellent and then you read it and you're kind of like meh. Um, so it's it's kind of like that. There's there's that kind of situation that happens where something is really really hyped and then it's a huge letdown. And it does have an emotional knock on effect for some people in this world, um, in this in the store and involved with these books. And it's how they move forward and how they resolve that because they don't just leave it there. They then move forward and resolve it. And in the end, it's about the power of friendship. Um, and I loved that. Uh, it, it was so much about the power of friendship. And I, I just, again, like Dreamweavers, I can't gush about it any more than I already am because I absolutely, absolutely loved it. And yeah, I, I would, there is a prequel to it. So I'm looking forward to picking that one up um, fairly soon. So yeah, I do, I do recommend it. Um, and yeah, please just go and read it. Just go and read it. That's all I can say. And the second of the audiobooks that I listened to this month is A Baller by John Gwynne. It's book two of the Faithful and the Fallen series by him. We're following Corbin and Nathair, who are by this book are firmly the main characters. Um, although we do follow more than one point of view, we're following other characters through this. Can't really talk about this book because, like I say, it's the second. It's um, epic high fantasy and it's there's a war going on in this world for the world of the banished lands and there's also a god war running alongside it and the god war and in this book we're firmly setting up the two sides against each other uh, so both for the banished lands and for the god war who they happen to align uh, we firmly know who the bright star and the dark sun is by the definitely by the end of this book um you think you know at the beginning but is lead you on a few paths. I think I remember saying in the wrap up of the first book that I don't really understand. I understand how we get to who the dark sun is, but I don't understand how we get to who the bright star is. And reading this book, I still don't understand it. I still don't know how, why people are so convinced that the person who's the bright star is the bright star. And is and I've I've already started listening to Ruin, um, at the point that I'm filming this. And I still don't get it. Um, but yes, thoroughly enjoy them. Uh, they, I'm listening to them on audio, so I'm not getting as much out of them as I would if maybe I read them. So I'm thinking that at some point um, I'm going to pick these up in paperback as well. Not this year, though. Um, they're quite chunky for that. But I will definitely, because I am collecting them in paperback as well, I've got uh, Malice and Ruin here. Um... So yeah, so I definitely will be picking them up and we'll pick up Roth um, probably in the month of August. 
as well so that I can finish the series. So I am enjoying it. Again, they're ones that as when I go out in the car on a journey that's more than like five, ten minutes, I pop it on so I can listen to it. So looking forward to picking those up. Um, I wouldn't say they're an introductory series to fantasy. I think maybe there's a bit too much. It throws you in a bit too much for that. Um, but certainly if you if you're in if you're in the beginning stages, if you've read a few fantasy novels, then I would definitely say give these a go. And the final book that I finished in the month of June was Delilah Green Doesn't Care by Ashley Herring Blake. This again is LGBTQ+, this time it's female female romance. It's about Delilah who is a lesbian and Claire who is bisexual. Delilah is returning to her hometown for her sister's wedding. She's going to be her sister's photographer for the wedding. She's been hired and she meets Claire in a bar. Only Claire doesn't recognise her. They knew each other at school because Claire is uh, Delilah's sister's best friend. Um, but Claire doesn't recognise her at first. Um, and it's about what happens after that. And it was really sweet. Um, it was really hot in places uh quite steamy i didn't expect an lgbtq plus romance novel to get me going um but yes it did i uh, really enjoyed those moments as well um but the whole story um uh, how delilah is with claire's daughter how she understands and supports claire how claire does the same for delilah it's just really lovely to see um, yes, there is the usual third act breakup, you know, contrived breakup, which it didn't, I saw it coming, I saw it coming a mile off, you see it coming right from the start of the book, if you've read enough romance, as soon as the plot point happens that you know is going to implode towards the end of the book, you know what's coming. And I did thoroughly enjoy it for that though, and uh, there is a second book. It's the beginning of a series of connected standalones. The next book is going to be Astrid's book, which is Delilah's sister. And I'm looking forward to picking that one up. So definitely enjoyed these books. And as I said with Heartstopper, um, this is this was the Cliterature Book Club pick for the month, um, which is run by Steph over at Steph Loves. The people who, the people who I watch now um, who are reading LGBTQ plus romances, I need to start listening to their um, their recommendations. Although this was a book club pick, it was uh, voted on and voted on by people who had read it and loved it and wanted to reread it. So definitely looking forward to picking this one up, um, picking more up by this author and taking more um, recommendations from them in future as well. Now I did say at the beginning of this video that I had 12 books for the month um, but I only finished 11. I had one book that I decided not to finish and that book was the Just One More Page book club pick um, and that was called Harvest by Jim Crace and I gave it about 60 odd pages and I just couldn't, it just didn't speak to me, it just, I don't know, I'm intrigued by the story I would love to know what actually happened um, but the actual book itself I just couldn't bring myself to read it um, so sadly I did take it back to the library unfinished. I might read it again in future, I don't know. Um, I might give it a go because like I say I, I was intrigued by it. I think the writing just wasn't what I necessarily needed in this month. Um, but it might come for another time. I'm never say never with books that I don't finish um, because you never know, they might be the right book at the right time in another time. Sorry, my cat, uh, this is Tabby. You haven't seen her on camera before. Uh, she's decided to clamber over all of my notes. So I'm just holding her out of the way while I do the end of this video wrap up. So those were all the books that I read in the month of June. I hope you all had a good reading month in June. Whatever you read, did you take part in whatever a thon? What team were you on? I'm not going to give away who the winner was, uh, but were you on the winning team? Just say yes if you were down in the um, links down below, comments down below. If you have enjoyed this video, then please do give me a thumbs up. And if you're not already, then subscribe to the channel. I've had a little flurry 
of uh, subscribers recently which has been awesome i'm absolutely loving seeing the numbers grow um, and getting to know all of you who are now commenting on my videos and yeah i make videos they go up every monday at 6 30 pm uk time with the occasional extra thrown in and i will see you all in the next one bye